Hey, welcome back to my shop, and welcome back to the multi-part series on inlay. I'm going to show you in a few easy steps how to go from here to there. This is part four. Well, I thought I'd pause briefly in this inlay series and take care of a couple of administrative items. One, I thought it was important at this point to give you a rough idea of my inspiration for this process and also uh, why I like it. Um, I was aimed in this direction by a, a good uh, woodworking friend and someone I met on the internet that I consider a mentor. A couple of videos to take a look at and I'll post all of these links on the uh, notes at the end of this um, episode. One is the Master uh, Techniques of Marketry by Silas Koff. Absolutely inspirational. I can't tell you how many times I've watched this DVD and it is the perfect companion for his book, A Marketry Odyssey. And um, I can say I've had a, a number of pleasurable hours um, in a big reading chair paging through this book and the book and the DVD, very inspirational. Another important um, inspirational link for me in this process, and I'm going to probably mispronounce his name, but uh, uh, DVD uh, entitled Marketry by Paul Schertz. And um, I'll have that link as well, as well as his uh, website. I've ordered a bunch of uh, materials from him. and. Um, this video as well I watched many, many, many times and made copious notes that I now are um, using in my shop. Two other books that I found important. One is The Marketry Course by Jack, Jack uh, Metcalf and John Apps. Absolutely wonderful book um, going through the uh, different techniques and how to apply them. And another great book, and I found this kind of backwards from um, a video on wood treks, Craig Van, uh, Vandonal uh, Stevens, The Art of Marketry. This is another just absolutely great book with a lot of uh, techniques. And so these, these resources are in my library, and I refer to them quite a bit. And I've made notes um, from both the DVDs and the books. Um, so if you're interested in any of this, this would be a great place to start getting a basic foundation as well as um, some ideas of the different techniques and how you might apply them. Another thing I've done is um, I've started keeping uh, track of the different drawings that I do and different ideas, and I've made a notebook, which I'll share, and basically just a three-ring notebook with some um, clear pocket protectors. This is the first, see if I can hold this up, this is the first marquetry pattern that I did and um, put that up there for comparison. Not a super great example, but boy did it um, light my fire for this technique and make me want to uh, try some more. So my next uh, piece I did is that right there. and. This is how it came out. I think you might have seen this earlier on my blog if anybody follows that. But um, see if I can. There you go. That is going to be the bottom of a uh, tray for um, a chest that I'm building. And then, of course, I've kept um, for this current project, I've got the leaf drawings and all the reference materials that I've used. And that way, if I want to go back and refer to this or modify it, I've got all these resources in one easy to locate uh, notebook. Well, one other little bit that I want to take care of, um, I've gotten a few uh, private messages as well as a, a few emails and um, some comments as well that I posted. Um, 
One, uh, I felt particularly privileged. Um, if anybody follows uh, the 207 forum on Tommy McDonald's uh, website, Major League Woodworking, you'll be familiar with um, a gentleman. His name is um, Chuck Middleton. And Chuck just does absolutely wonderful work. I, I've really enjoyed watching uh, the different things that he has posted on the forum. And it's always a privilege when he takes a look at my blog and sends me a comment. Um, I always look at that as a little feather in the hat, so to speak. And he emailed uh, a comment that I posted you know, wondering if this packet construction could be done with a stapler. Um, and actually, I think that is a great uh, suggestion. So if you wanted to get into this even less expensive and not get a pin nailer, um, a stapler is a great uh, idea. And I actually am going to show you right after this. I came out here after I got Chuck's uh, message and experimented. And you know what? It works really well. So definitely something that you can use. A little bit limited in terms of how thick of a packet you can make. But for something like we're making with this um, inlaid leaf uh, motif where you're just using two uh, veneers, it definitely works well. So when uh, Chuck sent me that email, I thought, well, let me, let me make a, a sample packet and um, put it together and see what happens. And I'm kind of glad he did that because I'm going to be making um, another leaf motif, but this time out of some cherry and see how that works on this chest that I'm making. So when I made my chest, um, again, I'm pretty frugal, so I saved all the cutoffs. And in between these two pieces of hardboard, and again, you know, I like these binder clips, so I put four on here and just keep this together as a packet. In between these two pieces of hardboard, this is some cherry veneer that is left over from making the panels. And I thought, oh, this would be a perfect size to cut um, into the four inch squares and make a, another leaf motif using Ch Chuck's technique. And as I got it out and looked at that cherry uh, grain, I thought, why wasn't I thinking about using that uh, for the motif all along? So I'm going to be making um, another leaf as an inlay with this cherry and see how that works out. And I have to thank Chuck for kind of heading me in this direction. So I'm going to um, reposition the camera here over the bench and show you uh, the technique that Chuck suggested. And it works. Um, so definitely something you can put in your toolbox. And if, um, if that's what gets you into doing this, I think it's a great thing. So let's reposition the camera and uh, show you how to do that.